Good afternoon, everybody, and uh, welcome to our presentation, Monitoring as a Service in the HPC Cloud. I'm Daryl Weaver, Head of Cloud Engineering at Vern Global, and my colleague is Stig Telfer from the sorry, CTO at Stack HPC. So just a quick introduction to Vern Global and our product, HPC Direct. So Vern Global is an Iceland data center. Um, and because we're located in Iceland, uh, it's powered by renewable energy, geothermal energy and hydroelectric power. Uh, so we also, because of the temperature of the air, have filtered air cooling rather than powered air conditioning. And so the um, carbon footprint of the data center is almost zero. Now we have a product called HPC Direct, and HPC Direct is aimed at HPC workloads. Now HPC workloads include a number of different sectors, including scientific computing, weather and climate analysis, uh, machine learning, bioinformatics, etc. Uh, now we have a term that we use to uh, describe an HPC cluster's characteristics called true HPC. True HPC has a long list of characteristics, but primarily it's on bare metal with dedicated hardware, low latency connections between servers, which usually means being on the same switch. Um, as, uh, job schedulers are usually included in order to make maximum use of the hardware. And we have high performance storage included um, and even licensing tools to manage certain licensed software as well. All of this is included as part of our product, HPC Direct. And uh, as part of that, we've recently included monitoring as a service as well. So we have uh, our HPC Direct Cloud is based on bare metal cloud service, uh, which is obviously provided by OpenStack Ironic. We use Stack HPC's tool Kyobi to deploy um, OpenStack and manage OpenStack over its life cycle. Um, and we've, that leverage is Collar Ansible to do the actual deployment of the containers and services. We found in our experience that gives us smooth upgrade paths between different versions. And we're currently in production on the Queen's uh, release of OpenStack. Now on top of that, we also build a customer portal, uh, which uh, we don't expect most HPC customers to learn OpenStack to manage their workloads. So our customer portal is focused on ease of use and what we call blueprints. We've created a blueprint, which is a one-click deployment of a complete cluster configuration, uh, which uh, details the number of nodes, the different types of nodes, so login nodes and compute nodes, for example, uh, the flavors of those nodes, uh, and we also include, uh, on top of that, the actual HPC workloads we're going to deploy onto those nodes by using Ansible roles. Now, uh, recently we've added uh, tenant uh, workload monitoring, and that, of course, uses Manaska. So I hand over to Stig to talk about Manaska. Thanks, Daryl. Uh, this is Manaska. Um, the diagram is pretty daunting. <laughs> but actually, if you look into the details, what it is is a series of best of breed services glued together with some smart logic, which adds value in order to provide higher level capabilities like multi-tenancy for users and the ability to push in arbitrary metrics uh, from user applications, manage that with logs, transform uh, logs into metrics, and a whole load of other compelling features which you won't see anywhere else in the monitoring space. So the way that that fits into uh, the deployments on HPC Direct is that um, when the portal instructs to, uh, to launch a new blueprint, OpenStack is instructed to create the infrastructure. And as Daryl says, once the infrastructure is created, Ansible playbooks will then pave the infrastructure to form the platform, which is customized and tailored to the client's requirements. Uh, that could include things like workload managers, high performance parallel file systems, InfiniBand configuration, but also it in embeds within the um, deployed instances the ability to automatically collect monitoring 
uh, logging telemetry information, post that off to the user's um, project within Manaska, and then save it there for free for the user's serve and provide it back to the user as a service in terms of dashboards, in terms of logging, and, and so on and so forth. So instead of having to create your own, uh, or having your users to create your, their own um, logging and monitoring solutions, having to design those, and then pay for the operation of those things. Using Manaska and HPC Direct enables HPC Direct to provide these things as a value-added service to the clients and actually to maintain a very strong configuration for gathering high-performance computing performance tele telemetry and providing it back to the, to the users for free. Looking further ahead, I mean, this is, this is pretty good, but we don't need to stop there because we have this longer view of the idea that we can create a holistic performance um, analysis solution. And the idea here is that we can gather performance data and uh, telemetry information from all levels of the infrastructure, from the network switches at the physical layer, the storage appliances, all the way through the operating systems of the server, the workload environment, and the applications themselves can generate their own custom telemetry in the context of whatever the application is doing. So, so we can actually provide these very rich sources of information and then view the, uh, the telemetry from one domain in the context of another. And this is how we can provide telemetry which is really insightful and really rich and really enables the, um, the users of HPC Direct to understand why their application is performing the way it is and how they could make it faster. Darryl. Thank you. So let's actually have a look at some use cases. Oh, wrong way. So, um, so one of our customers uh, who is uh, uh, on our platform uh, is called Cetavia. And Cetavia uh, provide um, expert analysis for the aviation industry, uh, intelligent fleet and weather analysis service is how they describe it. Um, they basically advise on flight operations and maintenance for aircraft fleets. An example of that is that they determine if aircraft need to burn extra fuel uh, due to remove ice crystals from the engines before they land. And sometimes they do, sometimes they don't, depending on the weather. And uh, Centavia provide that analysis in a timely manner so that uh, aircraft operators can, uh, uh, can make that decision uh, based on the latest data. So here we have an example of uh, monitoring or of the workload uh, for the Cetavia computer, computation runs. And there we can see on the top row, we've got the CPU usage. Uh, so you can see user system and the CPU frequency. On the middle row, we've got available memory. Then we've got uh, the local storage used there. Uh, and on the bottom, we've got the uh, network uh, traffic output. Uh, now, obviously, you can drill down into this. This is a Grafana front end, so you can isolate it per host. Uh, you can click on data points, uh, and you can get uh, some pretty detailed analysis through that. Now, we also have um, BGFS on their cluster as well, uh, and that runs over an InfiniBand interface for very low latency and fast storage. Uh, and here we can see just an example of the network traffic that is generated when they are storing large volumes of data uh, onto that BGFS uh, shared file system. Um, now, one of the things that um, we, we did find was extremely useful by uh, providing the tenant monitoring is, uh, is that we had a, a, a situation where Cetavia were running a test of about 10 nodes uh, and we were looking at the CPU usage, or more importantly, the customer was looking at the CPU usage for the performance of their jobs. Uh, and then what we actually found was that they were seeing a drop in performance of their CPUs on just a couple of the nodes for no apparent reason. Uh, that prompted us to delve into it in more detail. Uh, and then we found that actually there was a bug in the um, hardware uh, at the IPMI interface uh, layer. Uh, we, were able to, we weren't able to see, basically, there were some fans that weren't working properly. Uh, and what had happened was that the CPUs were overheating, and then it was dropping the, the frequency of the CPU to uh, protect the CPU, and therefore the jobs were running slow, slower. So um, this is a really good sort of troubleshooting tool and uh, optimization tool for workloads uh, on our HPC cloud. So thank you very much for listening.
Uh, as I said, I'm Daryl Weaver. This is Dig Telfer. Uh, and uh, uh, thank you for uh, listening to my presentation.